Hey guys, uh, so I finally beaten the first game of 2015, which is Dying Light. Not a bad start of the year actually, but not a brilliant one either. It looks more like something our beloved gaming industry would produce in a hangover caused by all of the New Year celebrations, <laughs> just in order for us to leave it alone. Like a parent that gives an annoying kid an iPad just to shut it up. Uh, first things first though. Performance. I've deliberately waited for several days before diving into this one, but it still didn't help because the game has a ton of issues despite including a bunch of Nvidia features and a pretty decent uh, set of options. My main issue is annoying frame drops every single time the game goes into a cutscene. My FPS drops down from 60 to 15 every time something story-wise happens and even sometimes when a zombie grabs you, which is totally unacceptable. Not to mention sound issues that occur much less but still annoying as fuck. Game-wise, uh, well, it is mediocrity in a nutshell, and it does its job of entertaining you reasonably well. What's the best about it, it knows how to escalate, making it more fun as it progresses, but at the same time, the game is totally unmemorable. Hell, I've beaten it yesterday, and I only remember the last name of the main character, and only due to the fact that it is repeated time and time again in the last 20 minutes. Uh, besides, there is a little irony in the fact that a guy named Crane fights on a crane. But back to the point. The story and the characters are boring as shits. They are so generic to this whole zombie apocalypse plot, I can mute the game, turn off the subtitles and still know exactly what they're saying. We've got the usual ensemble of characters here, a crazy thug, an old scientist, a survivor's leader, a badass woman, a bunch of crazies around them who I would rather kill and not do fetch quests for. The only difference is that all of them have Middle Eastern accents instead of a generic American. <laughs> but regardless, I was so annoyed by the dialogue, in a couple of hours I was skipping all of that, and in about 10 hours I've decided to do only story missions just to beat the game and forget that all these people, their voice acting and terrible lip sync exist at all. Where the game shines though is in the gameplay. It is what made me going. It's basically Dead Island mixed with Mirror's Edge. The Dead Island part is in the combat and crafting. <laughs> and yes, whacking zombies with an electrified mallet is pretty damn satisfying. What I also find satisfying for whatever reason is guns. Uh, perhaps due to spending a large portion of the game with melee weapons, a sound of a shooting rifle was as joyful as a baby's first cry that makes my enemies' heads explode. <laughs> but overall, there is nothing particularly special about the combat, uh, it's just executed pretty damn well. Parkour, on the other hand, is special. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, parkour in Mirror's Edge is much, much better. But Mirror's Edge is a linear, tight game, while Dying Light just lets you lose to do whatever you want. I don't uh, really like that system of looking directly at the thing you want to grab onto, cause it led me to a bunch of annoying deaths and abandoning several climbing challenges, cause the system makes them infuriating. Besides, it's Ubi Towers once again, and fuck that. But all in all, free running in this game is great, um, especially when you get to Sector Zero with a climbing hook, uh, taken straight from Just Cause 2, by the way. But hell, it was great in Just Cause 2, and it's great here. Besides, free running is spiced up by special abilities like jump kicking, ramming and just using zombies as springboards and activatable traps that help you dispose of anything chasing you. Enemy variety, by the way, is pretty standard. You got boomers, spitters, big guys, zombie children from Dead Space, guys whose jaw splits in two parts from one of the Blade movies. What's bad though is that the design of special zombies is kinda shit, especially the boomers. In a dark place they are literally indistinguishable from normal biters, but hitting them on the back of the head with an axe results in an instant death and me swearing at the game. I like the look of split jaw ones though, uh, but I guess it's only because of my own imagination, since they appear only at night and before you can take a good look at them they bite your head off. 
Actually, the night is the feature that makes Dying Light really stand out. Because uh, at night the concept of the game changes, zombies suddenly become more vicious and everything out there wants to get you. Not to mention players that can invade your game as a zombie hunter whose sole purpose is to kill you. The night is a great concept that really spices up the experience by creating the juxtaposition of being a murder machine and a helpless little baby, unlike say a monotonous grind that is Dead Island. What I want to mention once again is how the game paces itself. It actually does a very good job up until the end when it commits one of the worst sins of game design in my opinion. The game starts in the slums, uh, with a lot of one and two storied buildings uh, and pretty standard zombies. But as it progresses with new weapons and skills, it provides new challenges so you never feel completely overpowered. In its second part, it introduces a proper city with tall buildings, rooftops and apartments. That was a very welcome change of scenery that made the last few missions enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, the final confrontation, uh, as it is supposed to be, is an ultimate test of your abilities that killed me quite a few times, and I actually like that. But then, the very last battle is a fucking cutie. Why? It is a melee fight and you have a working melee engine, why don't just use it? This finale plummets the difficulty and enjoyment from the top of a skyscraper right into hell and down the Satan's butthole. I'm not even mad at this point, I, I, I just wanna know why. What is the reasoning? What went through your head when you made a decision to include a worthless QTE instead of using the system that you have already used for every other boss fight that is enjoyable, visceral and that works? I just don't get it! <sighs> but overall, I can actually recommend Dying Light. Uh, with a discount and after patching, of course, but I think it's worth a wait. Especially if you are one of the psychotics that aims at 100% completion, you will definitely get your money's worth, because there is at least 50 hours of gameplay if you do all the side stuff. The game's fine, I just wish it would be the last zombie game ever. Thanks for watching guys, the name is Grvachar and I shall see you from within my next video.